A couple months and a million views ago, I made a highly <laughs> controversial video where I criticized iPhone X and Apple's decision to get rid of the home button in favor of a gesture-based user interface. Now, I didn't claim the gestures were bad, mind you, just that I felt Apple hadn't implemented them very well. A lot of people said, you idiot, you've never even seen the phone. How can you criticize it? Well, now I've seen the phone and I've owned one for two weeks and it's a good phone, egregious price tag aside. But while things are mostly good, I still think several things about the phone and about the user interface of iPhone X are completely moronic. So let's talk about them. The notch, ugh, the notch. All right, so in portrait mode, like many people have mentioned, it's really not a big deal. It's not pretty, mind you, but the notch isn't annoying because it exists. The notch is annoying because it is utilized so poorly. Instead of a nice long status bar, like literally, literally, every phone ever made, the true depth camera system steals about half of the status bar's usable real estate. You've only got those two little ears to jam every single icon and there's not enough room. So you have to enter the idiotically inconvenient control center, and I'll get to that whole ordeal in a minute, to see the familiar old status bar with icons like do not disturb, rotation lock, alarms, VPN, etc. important stuff. This is annoying for a couple of reasons. Number one, for example, if I have do not disturb enabled, I have no idea unless I enter control center bad design. Secondly, the stuff that actually is in those tiny little status bars is useless. Cell phone signal? A battery icon without percentage? Really, Apple? Really? I'm wondering far more often if my phone is in do not disturb mode, or if I've set an alarm already, than I am about how many freaking cellular service bars I have. When was the last time you didn't have service? Get rid of that crap. Get it out of there. Or at least, like with Control Center, give us users the ability to customize what shows up in that tiny little limited space if you're going to make it half the size of every other phone on the market. All right, so Control Center. I don't know about you, but I use Control Center all the time. And I realized how much I used it once I couldn't access it anymore without shimming my entire hand up the phone to reach the very top right-hand corner of the screen to enable it. Not only is it tricky to access, but it looks stupid because even though Control Center and Notification Center use the same action, swiping down from the top, they have different animations and design styles, which is completely bizarre. They don't even look like the same operating system, but design aside, Apple knows that this is an idiotic placement because in the newest iOS 11.2 beta, they've added a permanent tab, which was previously only there for a few minutes, to remind you that you need to pull down from there to activate Control Center. It's bizarre. Now, some have said, oh, Quinn, stop being dramatic, just enable reachability. Yes, previous iPhones introduced this feature where if you double tap the Touch ID sensor, you could bring the screen down closer to your thumb. It was handy. But on iPhone 10, it's this awkward, inconsistent gesture where you have to swipe down about half an inch from the bottom of the phone. If you swipe too low, it doesn't work. If you swipe too high, nope. If you swipe too far from the center, eh. Reachability isn't enabled by default on iPhone 10, and now I know why, because it sucks. And I'm not the only one who thinks this. Go watch any review, they mention it. So, Mr. Hotshot, if you think you're smarter than Apple, where would you put Control Center? Well, first of all, I don't think I'm smarter than Apple, but maybe they could put it in the multitasking drawer as the first card when you swipe up and to the left. It's in the same place, there's fewer gestures, and it's easily accessible from the bottom. Oh yeah, multitasking, by the way, is also unintuitive. Apple tells you when you set up the phone for the first time, as well as in their fingertips packet they include in the box, to swipe up in order to enter multitasking, but that's not actually a good way to do it. It's slow because the phone is waiting to make sure that you're not trying to swipe up to go home before your app switcher pops up. There's a bit of a delay. However, when you swipe up and to the right, it immediately brings you into card view. That's the best way to enter multitasking. But Apple never teaches you how to do this, and it isn't in intuitive to figure out on your own. In fact, it wasn't until I read an article online that I learned to do this, and I'm a tech guy. My brother and my dad, who are a little tech, less tech savvy, had no idea until I told them. That's not good design. A few other rapid fire oddities before I wrap up. The home bar gesture is good, just like I predicted. However, it is bad in landscape mode. The home bar gesture doesn't respect device orientation, which is just silly. Let's say you're playing a game, all right? You're in landscape mode and you're done with the game. If you turn your phone to portrait mode, it doesn't matter. You can't swipe home. Your phone ignores you. You have to swipe up from the landscape's idea of bottom. Also in landscape mode, if that wasn't weird enough, I'm assuming as an attempt to prevent accidental swipes, you have to swipe home twice to actually go home. You have to swipe up once to activate the home bar. And then once it turns white, you have to swipe up again to actually act on the gesture. Talk about annoying. 
On the lock screen, there are two new 3D touch buttons, and they're actually kind of handy. But one of them is programmed for the camera, which doesn't make any sense because swipe right to camera is still there, which is faster. There's two redundant items that do the same thing. Again, these buttons should be customizable, but they're not. Also, they shouldn't be an iPhone X exclusive thing either. Every iPhone since the iPhone 6S has had 3D touch. What the heck, Apple? Spread the love. Get this to everyone. Last thing, when you install an app from the App Store, Face ID verifies it's you, and then it tells you to double click to install. I got two phone calls, one from my brother and one from my friend, asking why they couldn't install an app even after double tapping the screen. They didn't realize that you have to double click the power button, not the display. These aren't dumb people. Apple just isn't very clear on what you have to do. Besides, why is purchasing an app even tied to a hardware button anyways? Just put a purchase button on the screen like anyone else. Now, I realize that this video may have sounded like a rant and I didn't mean for it to. I mean, I like the iPhone 10, I really do. But there are just some things that are so poorly thought out and iOS 11 is clearly not designed with the iPhone 10 in mind. Luckily, these problems are software related and they're likely to be fixed in the next few months, if not the next major release of iOS 12. But there's still problems. With the year one quirks, with the ridiculous $1,000 price tag, you're probably better holding out until next year when the design of iPhone 10 becomes the norm at a lower price with fewer compromises. I'm Quinn of Snazzy Labs. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you did not like it, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these, but most importantly, and as always, Stay snazzy.